today we're talking brisket and how to get a good smoke ring. Hey, yo, this is Dash. Yeah. yeah. So I've had, you know, a smoke ring is one of those things that seems to be like a big piece of contention. And, and people, I feel like people have, you know, there's a lot of mis misknowledge out there or, or misinformation out there. So I had someone comment recently that the key to getting a good smoke ring was to use celery seasoning. And that's not the key. The key to a good smoke ring is to have your brisket be cold and your smoker be cool. <clears throat> if you cook your brisket at too high of a temperature, what's going to happen is the, the what's called the Maillard reaction, which is the reaction of the external temperature where the smoker heat is going to be warming up the meat. If those two, you know, hit whatever the temperature is, whatever the number is, together too quickly, you will not have any smoke ring. The smoke ring is actually where the hotter outside is meeting the cooler inside of the meat. And that's when you get that reaction. That's when you get that pink flavor, pink, uh, that pink, it's not flavor. It's just the pink meat from. Now, what I'm gonna do to help uh, make the smoke ring better, I was actually gonna freeze one of the briskets, but I can't. Um, I have an event that I'm, I'm pressed for time and I'm going to be cooking for for tomorrow, but I wanted to show you guys how to get the best smoke ring possible. Like I said, if I had more time, I would have frozen or partially frozen one of the briskets to be able to show you that you can get the deepest smoke ring possible by making sure the brisket is extra cold. Now what I did when I was at the Restaurant Depot, I was trying to, to I thought this whole thing up I actually was gonna put one of the briskets in the freezer. So I have two briskets here. This is 12.2 pounds and this is 12.22 pounds. That's about as close and even as you're gonna get for briskets as far as size from the restaurant depot. Um, I, the order I have for tomorrow, I need 10 pounds of brisket, 22 pounds or 24 pounds of brisket. Obviously, I'm, I'm gonna have more than I need, so I'm gonna have some brisket for some, maybe some brisket enchiladas. Actually, if you haven't already, check out DC Cook's video. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to his latest brisket enchilada video. I think I might give that a shot next sometime next week. But, that was my plan. <clears throat> when I got, when I was driving home from the Restaurant Depot, that, I kinda thought that it might be foolish to, do putting one in the freezer because that could drastically throw off my timetable for this event that I have tomorrow. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to put one in the freezer, but I am gonna put these in the refrigerator and I'm gonna take them directly from the refrigerator and put them into the smoker. For this experiment, we're gonna be using Bessie, the, um, the, the big smoker, the big wood burning smoker, which obviously burning wood is going to give you a better, deeper smoke ring. So I'm gonna pick this up. We're gonna fast forward until I start the smoker or get the smoker going and uh, we'll get these into the smoker. I'm gonna get them seasoned and I'm gonna put them, I, I have refrigerators out in, in my garages. I'm gonna get these settled in the refrigerator out in the garages and we can go from there. Okay, so as promised, it has been a couple hours and it is, I'm in the middle, it is the middle of the night. And I wanted to introduce you, if you don't know who this is, this is my leading lady, this is Bessie. Bessie the Kick A Smoker, all right, you know, see it there all right now what you can see is I have a fire burning or all caps rage right now with the fire okay got the wood fire going and you can see the thermometers here this one is wrapped almost up to 450 degrees and this one is at four and a quarter right now so what I do is I get the fire going, I get the fire raging to help clean out any residual grease or mess that's in there. 
uh, in the smoker before I get started and then I steam clean the smoker before I load my food in. So I'm going to ramp the smoker almost all the way up, get it up to the to as high as it is. I mean, I can wrap this. I've wrapped the thermometers up over 500 degrees in this smoker. I could bake in the smoker. <clears throat> A pizza in the smoker. I'm going to go ahead and get it steam cleaned out. So at this point, I'm going to do that. Now, also, you can see little bits. This is, uh, this is steam. This is not actually smoke. That steam from the fact that I have the water boiling down in the, I have water in the bottom of the smoker. And you can see and hear the water is, is, is boiling pretty, pretty hot and heavy in here. So at this point, again, I'm going to get it steam cleaned out. Okay, so after I've cleaned out the smoker, I am going to throttle the intake back. The intake on this smoker is on the side. If you've never seen it, let me show you. So these are the intakes on this particular smoker. And what I'm going to do is throttle this back. So I keep track of how wide this is open by counting the diamonds on the expanded steel here. And I'm going to get it at uh, one and a half diamonds there on either side and then that will and then that will throttle, be, throttle Bessie back to the point where she'll settle in at 200 and about 50 degrees your mileage obviously is going to vary depending on how you're going to have to take care of getting your smoker set up at this point I'm going to you see I have one two three different levels if you haven't seen the video where I expanded and added a third shelf into this or the ability to use a third shelf into the smoker um, it'll be up there now I'm um, because I am not cooking to capacity and I'm just doing I'm doing uh, two briskets and then I have what I have I have two briskets sorry uh, about 20 25 pounds of chicken was a little more than 20 it's like 24 pounds of chicken and then I had three racks of ribs so I'm going to put the ribs towards the front up here I'm going to put the brisket up to the front up here I'll have chicken from here on over and then I'll have chicken again here on over so let me get the smoker look So the the uh, brisket and the chicken are loaded.
Okay, and that's pretty much it. So at this point, what I will do is I will stay out here by the smoker for a few moments, monitor the temperatures on the thermometers, and I also have a wireless probe that's in here, and the probe actually comes in here, and I have a long range wireless thermometer. If you haven't seen the videos where I talk about the long range video, uh, wireless thermometer, there's a card up there. <clears throat> this will allow me to go ahead on back in the house or get some things done around the, in the garage uh, without having to like be looking at it the entire time that I'm cooking. Um, I know from experience with using the smoker, once I get it settled in at about 250 degrees, if I have the firebox loaded, um, I can go away or do some other things for about an hour and then I'm going to have to chuck more pieces of wood into the smoker. So I'll catch you guys much, much later, uh, probably by the time I finish this and then we'll, we'll actually talk about the experiment, which was putting cold brisket into the smoker, getting the brisket going and looking at the fire rings or, or excuse me, smoke ring. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, before I go in the house and maybe lay back down and get some stuff done in the garage, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, 250 degrees on the nose. And this one is slightly higher right now just because this is where the uh, hot water is. But it will, once the water, and you can kind of hear it boiling still down there, once the water stops boiling, uh, that one will come in and settle in right at 250 degrees as well. It's just obviously this is the hotter side right now because this is where the heat uh, uh, heat is hitting the, the water plate. <clears throat> so, but once you get to know your smoker, you know your smoker. Uh, if you don't know, I've owned Bessie for uh, going on five years now, actually a little over five years. We've had a lot of cooks together um, and I know Bessie in and out. So. When I say I need to set a temperature, I can set a temperature. And then at this point, what I will do is I don't regulate the temperature by opening up the inlets or anything like that. I just put in another piece of wood when the temperature uh, starts to come. So the temperature right now is leveled out. When the temperature starts to fall, I'll put another stick or two in and the temperature will start to ramp back up. And then once it ramps back up, I know I have another about hour or so and the temperature will start to fall and we'll play this game up and down, up and down, up and down over the next couple hours. All right, see you guys again in a bit. I know I did a whole separate video about fire management and other things like that. But while I'm sitting out here and it's the middle of the night, I figured I would kind of talk about how and or when I add wood. So I personally like to run my smoker at between 225 degrees and 275 degrees. Settling in and want to focus the majority of my cook at about 250 degrees. Now, if you are having an issue, or if you are trying to keep your fire at 250 degrees and it goes up and then you start to, to you start to um, throttle back your intake and then it drops down too low and then you open it back up and then you open it up too hot. No, that's not how you run a smoker. Unless you have a charcoal smoker or an electric smoker or a propane smoker, if you're burning a wood burning smoker, the temperature is going to fluctuate. That is a fact of life. So with that being said, I'm gonna chuck in two more uh, sticks, two more pieces of wood, and I'm gonna get my temperature back up to 250 degrees or just above 250 degrees. Right now, we've dropped in, and again, I, I told you, and not again, but I told you that once this side cooled off this and this would be sitting at the same temperatures and you can see we're down just under 225 degrees so i'm going to go ahead and get some wood added to the smoker and we will continue or i will continue to cook and uh yeah <laughs> it's the middle of the night sorry all right, let me go ahead and get this taken care of. All right, you know, it's one of those things where if I didn't show a picture of it, did it even happen? But this is what my fire bed looks like or my coal bed looks like after about an hour and a half uh, from once I got it started. I think I showed you guys a picture, a video. If I did, here it is of what it looks like when I got the fire started. All caps rage right now with the fire, okay? 
Got the wood fire going. Versus now. All right, you see I just have coals in there and I'm going to chuck in two sticks. There's one or two splits. There's two and it won't take very long for those to get lit and uh, we're gonna keep the fire rolling. Okay, and what are you gonna say? Make sure you subscribe. Okay. Give a thumbs up. All right, so let's try this again. It's subscribe. Su make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give a thumbs up. What if you like? Bye. <laughs> All right, so that was my daughter. She always wants to help whenever I, uh, she catches me filming the video. So just like she said, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you like what you saw, if you learned something, please leave me a thumbs up down below. And uh, leave a comment, if you, again, if you have any other questions. And I'll see you next time.